So re uh, regarding the agenda number three, uh, Chen Xiong is on, she's uh, on leave. So she asked to, you know, we can just remove this agenda from this uh, intro meeting. Okay, thank you, uh, Mark. Yeah, I did mention that uh, it's off the agenda and uh, thank you for, uh, you know, sharing this with us. Okay. Uh, anything else from you, Loa? Before we uh, jump to the first presentation that we have today. So the. F no. Okay. I'm not hearing anything coming from you. Uh, I'll assume everything is okay. <clears throat> Okay, great. Uh, so the first every, present. Sorry. I was just saying everything is okay. Yes, go ahead. I was. Oh, okay. That's why. Okay. Thank you. So the first presenter uh, we have is Rakesh. I'll uh, flip to Rakesh slides. Uh, and uh, you have the floor, Rakesh. Let me know if you don't see the slides. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rakesh Gandhi. Uh, I see the slides, uh, Tarek. Uh, thanks for presenting. Okay. Um, so I'm presenting uh, this draft uh, on enhanced performance monitoring in uh, segment routing networks uh, on behalf of the um, authors listed. Next slide, please. So the agenda uh, uh, today is uh, to look at the requirements and the scope of this uh, draft and the summary of the, um, uh, uh, the solution and the next steps. Next slide, please. So uh, the draft addresses uh, the requirements uh, for uh, performance uh, monitoring, uh, enhanced performance monitoring, we call it in segment routing networks uh, for end-to-end um, -end, uh, SR paths, could be P2P or P2MP, and it's applicable to SRMPLS and SRV6 data planes. Uh, so there is an uh, uh, increased uh, uh, requirement to run single protocol in uh, SR networks to simplify implementation and uh, development cost, uh, to simplify the deployment and the operational com complexity in, in, in the network. Uh, avoid the, the interop issues, so no reflector dependencies. Uh, uh, make it stateless on the reflector, so it's unaware of the monitoring protocol. Uh, the state is in the probe message, which is the spirit of SR. And uh, also, uh, uh, there is a push for higher scale and faster uh, detection interval if there is any performance degradation. So all of these requirements pushing us uh, for um, uh, some innovation in the segment routing uh, networks. So the scope of this draft is uh, using uh, existing uh, probe messages uh, basically defined in um, uh, RFC 5357 and 8762 for the TWAMP um, uh, protocol. Uh, having said that, uh, it's applicable uh, to uh, any uh, user defined messages as well, because it's limited uh, uh, to what uh, querier sends uh, and querier understands. So this draft uh, uh, was presented at Spring Working Group at the last ITF, uh, and uh, previously it was presented at MPLS um, a virtual meeting, MPLS Working Group meeting as well in April. Uh, but we ran out of uh, time at that time. Um, so ho hopefully uh, we are the first one, so we have a good, good chunk of time today. Next slide, please. So uh, the, the enhanced uh, performance monitoring uh, uses PM probes in loopback mode. So this is an example of uh, for SR policy where we have sender and reflector uh, originating or the head end and the, the tail end of the policy. Uh, probes are sent in loopback mode using the segment list uh, of the SR policy. And uh, in loopback mode, uh, probe messages are not punted. Uh, on the reflector uh, or not injected back, they are just forwarding uh, in the fast path. So this way it's just forwarded like data path 
for data packets and reflectors is agnostic to the any monitoring protocol that's running uh, in this mode. And next slide, please. And the loopback mode is enhanced uh, uh, for enhanced performance uh, monitoring uh, using network programming functions. Uh, so this is to optimize the operation of point and timestamp and inject the packets on the reflector node. And they are uh, uh, fast, uh, they are forwarded on fast path uh, to detect the, the, any uh, performance degradation or lightness uh, failure uh, uh, very quickly. So in this mode, uh, uh, using the network programming function, the reflector node adds the receive timestamp in the payload of the uh, probe messages uh, in the fast path. Um, and it does it only if the, the address in the probe message matches the local address. Uh, this way it ensures that the probe messages uh, come back from the intended uh, reflector node. Next slide, please. And uh, in terms of notifications, uh, uh, the querier node monitors the um, SR path, and uh, the, if uh, consecutive, say, M number of probe messages have delay values uh, crossing some locally configured thresholds, uh, then delay metrics are notified. Uh, if um, consecutive N number of, uh, say, uh, probe messages are not received, then uh, the heartbeat, uh, basically, loudness. Uh, uh, failure is notified uh, as soon as probes start to flow, then uh, liveness is declared success that uh, there's a, a heartbeat is uh, restored. Uh, so it allows uh, a pretty uh, fast and uh, simple um, uh, notifications for the various performance degradations. Next slide, please. So some of the mechanics uh, involved. Um, so th this one shows uh, the TWAMP uh, probe uh, message formats, and uh, uh, this is to uh, leverage the existing uh, wide deployment of TWAMP uh, implementations, as well as all the um, uh, operational tooling around this. Um, and um, in this case, uh, uh, there is a timestamp offset 16. Uh, this is where the reflector would add the receive timestamp. Uh, the querier would add the transmit timestamp, uh, and uh, this would allow to um, monitor the end-to-end uh, -end delay for the SR path. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this is achieved for SR MPLS using um, the timestamp label, a uh, special purpose timestamp uh, label, which is used uh, for uh, uh, timestamp and forward and network programming in SRMPLS. Uh, the in, inner IP header, the addresses are swapped, so it will come back um, to the source uh, who sends the, um, uh, the message once the MPLS header is removed by the uh, reflector node. And next slide, please. Uh, idea is very similar for SRV6 data plane as well. Uh, there is an endpoint function uh, defined, uh, which does the similar thing as uh, timestamp and forward, and um, that's the receive timestamp. Uh, reverse path can be IP, uh, in which case SRH is removed, or reverse, reverse path can be SR. Um, in this case, uh, the packet is sent back with the SR uh, with the remain uh, segment list. Next slide, please. So the, the solution also allows to explore the ECMP paths, which are typical for SR um, network, um, for SR policy, for example. Uh, it's done using the, taking, to take advantage of the hashing function in forwarding plane. Uh, so it could be uh, shipping the loopback addresses for IPv4, 127 address, uh, or for IPv6, for example, sweeping flow label in the header. Next slide, please. So this is, uh, there is no signaling involved in um, bootstrapping those sessions, um, uh, unlike other monitoring protocol. Um, 
So this is achieved using uh, the provisioning model where the sender and reflector nodes uh, in the network are provisioned. Um, you would have loopback mode or enhanced mode, uh, the measuring, measurement protocol, the packet count, uh, the timestamp format, uh, threshold values, uh, UDP ports, and and what and and um, um, network programming label um, uh, can be also programmed, or it can be INI allocated as well. Next slide, please. Uh, we welcome your comments and suggestions. Um, we we are requesting Spring Working Group uh, to adopt uh, this uh, document. Uh, there is MPLS um, involved here, uh, especially the special purpose label allocation, and uh, we want to keep MPLS working group in the loop uh, for this work. So that's what uh, I had. Um, thanks. Yep, I, I have questions, and I don't. I'm gonna check on the uh, chat if there's anybody. Yeah, I see multiple people have requested uh, to be in the queue. Uh, Greg uh, is the first. Uh, thank you. Um, good morning, good time of day, everyone. Uh, Rakesh, thank you for presentation. I have a couple of questions. Uh, so, first, um, you say it's a loopback mode. Um, the format of uh, TWAMP and STEMP packets. Uh, um sender packets and reflector packets they're quite distinct so uh you say that reflector doesn't have a state but by the standard uh the reflector is supposed to count packets uh it received and sent uh to on a specific session is this functionality somehow avoided because uh that's uh, a little confusing yeah, the the proposal uh, uses the message format defined in uh, uh, RFC fifty three fifty seven uh, or eighty seven sixty two, but that's basically it. It just uses the message format to carry the timestamps. It's not uh, the, the the reflector does not follow uh, anything uh, any procedure uh, for uh, T one, for example. Uh -huh. uh, so if um, so you're not uh, doing a uh, packet was uh, one way. So this does allow when you not not receive the packets back at the querier, you are you know that uh, packets not being uh, is liveness uh, affected, but the reflector is agnostic to um, the protocol. So reflector is not uh, PM uh, aware in this case. But uh, so you said uh, that uh, you uh, derive the notion of packet loss on your uh, SR policy by the fact that you didn't receive the round trip packet. But how you can differentiate, how you detect the pa uh, packet loss on a reverse path? Because um, it traverses. How over IP network, over SRMPLS network, over SRV6 network? So the, the the mechanism is similar to other monitoring protocol for liveness detection, um, where um, uh, you, you, the querier would send the packet and it will wait for the response to come back at the querier. And if uh, X number of packets are not received back, then uh, it declares the um, uh, liveness down. So this it's no different than other protocols from that point of view. Uh, having said that, it ensures that because of um, reflector checks for the address in the packet matching the local one, you know that it's coming back from the right reflector node that is intended. But, but, uh, um. So if reflector doesn't have a notion and the only um, is by um, your data plane programming, how do you know that it's not some other node uh, that responds to you? 
And uh, for the performance measurement, so if your reverse path is over IP network, so uh, the time travel over SRMPLS, for example, uh, tunnel and IP network might be quite different. So how can you achieve the accurate uh, delay measurement? So uh, it's, uh, it's up to the querier on how to send the probe messages uh, to control the reverse path as well. So if uh, for SRMPLS example, uh, it can put uh, reverse SR path in the MPLS header as well, in case uh, of SRV6 also in the SRH to receive a reply back on a specific reverse path. Uh, and the first question that you had, it, it would return back from the intended responder node because responder only responds if the address matches its local address. So uh, these are the uh, techniques that's used to ensure that uh, uh, you have deterministic um, monitoring. Um, uh, on your first um, assumption that if you program uh, the loopback path, so the round, then uh, this packet will just touch the reflector or because if it processes in all paths, in, in all nodes, so you're just traversing the node, there is no time stamping on the far end. Uh, that's been already uh, defined in spring um, RFC of using the probes that have um, looping or circling through their topology. Um, but it's hard to see how, why, why do you need uh, to TWAMP or STAMP? It could be any probe because you're effectively you're measuring uh, round trip delay assuming that you are targeting the right probe. Yeah, so the reason we are uh, using TWAMP in uh, probe diff messages uh, is the wider implementation and deployment of the message formats is widely understood by a large number of hardware and uh, silicons. And um, uh, lookback messages uh, are not, uh, it doesn't exist for T1 uh, today. So this is uh, the new in this draft. Uh, having said that, it extends the loopback concept with network programming uh, to achieve the one-way delay measurement. Uh, so you can do loopback and you can get the round trip delay, uh, but the use case for SR being addressed is the one-way forward direction delay by doing the T1 and T2. Uh, and these message formats allow to put T1 and T2 using the existing mechanisms, uh, existing format that all the hardware understand. Uh, and this way we achieved the, the, the one-way performance monitoring as well as the liveness detection using uh, the simple and single uh, uh, mechanism. Um, another question I have is, um, about their allocation of uh, new uh, special purpose label or enhanced special purpose label. Um, so this looks like uh, OEM functionality. So why not to use a uh, GAL label? So uh, GAL is usually at the bottom of the stack. Um, and it has a purpose of punting the probe message. Uh, the use case here is not, it just to do opposite of that, means not to punt the packet, but forward it at line rate uh, with a network programming function to uh, add a receive timestamp. Um, so GAL, GAL is the complete opposite of what you want to achieve. Um, well, the, 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 the situation uh, with their um, time stamping, their, the format uh, for the timestamp uh, is uh, different. So basically, uh, you need to reformat the packet. You cannot really put the timestamp 
uh, in a T1 uh, packet or stamp, uh, stamp packet as it was received. Uh, fields have to be uh, copied around. So how you uh, achieve, achieve that? So the hardware on the reflector node adds the timestamp at the right location. So on the reflector uh, today, packets is punted, uh, then the control plane adds timestamp at the right location and injects it back. This whole process is uh, a very uh, heavy processing work uh, and uh, complexity and uh, interrupt issue and many other things. And this is the simplification that comes from the network programming function in segment routing networks. Uh, it's a simple mechanism, uh, widely used network programming concepts where uh, using the, the ability of the hardware to do this time stamping at line rate uh, and achieve uh, the, the, you know, the, the requirements or the performance goals in, in the new uh, 5G networks, for example. Okay. Um, Okay, I uh, I have the, I, I tried to capture most of your questions on the Etherpad, but uh, you know I encourage you to review the questions and you know to be fair with the people in the queue. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Either either go. We, we we will reassess if we have time today, but to give the chance to other people in the queue. I, I understand. Thank you. Okay, let's take it to the list. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Noah, you're next in. Uh, in the queue, do you want to ask your question? I uh, uh, have two things. Can you back up the slides, uh, one or two slides? Is it here? Uh, stop, stop, stop. Oh, okay. What was the, the figure? The figure, okay. There, okay. Uh, I think it's, yeah, uh, this slide talks about network pro program programming label. Uh, you were, Rakesh, you were very uh, off when you did talk about that label. You said it can be allocated to. Uh, is that something you actually plan to do, or is it in, it's in here just as a Yes. Yeah. So there are. Uh, uh, so the requirement is to have network programming label that reflector node uh, understands, and this, when it receives a packet with that label, it knows uh, what to do: uh, put the timestamp and forward the packet. Uh, there are two ways uh, of uh, achieving. Uh, maybe could be more than two ways, but at least two ways. One is that uh, we uh, we have IANA allocated the special purpose label, and uh, this way all nodes know this what this label is for. And the second is that uh, controller allocates uh, a global label, and it programs uh, uh, the nodes in the network. Uh, and then this way the reflector also knows that uh, uh, this label is um, this is the purpose of this label. So. Um, there are multiple ways of allocating this label, um, and I think uh, the, uh, this is similar to some of the other concepts. Uh, for example, IOAM um, uh, schemes also talk about similar models. And uh, but I think the more standard way uh, or is to allocate a label, and this way it's um, it, it, it's uh, all vendors have implemented the special purpose label, and this way it's. Um, uh, it's standardized and, uh, and it's well understood behavior. But having said that, uh, uh, controller can also program and uh, using APIs, and uh, this can also be achieved. Do you have a preference, or do both of the documents have a preference? So I, I will look for uh, uh, feedback from the working group uh, on. Uh, which which way is the you know which direction it can we go? I think both methods would exist. Uh, even when we have the special purpose allocate label allocated, it doesn't mean that now you know the controller cannot uh, pro use API to program a global label, uh, for example. So, uh, but having said that, uh, um, 
I, I look for opinion and feedback from the working group on the on the work collaborate with the working group. Okay, I, I don't I won't, don't want to push here, but uh, we have had um, problems with the global label because it up to space pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, what I'm saying is if if you, if you say that you will have a special label. Uh, allocated for the network programming label. That's fine. Then you can go with, with those methods. But I think you need to have that one. And that means that you need to have two special labels allocated to this graph. Right? Um, one, right? Why two? Um, if you have one uh, can you back up the slide? I thought there was one, one more label listed. Yeah, it's a 15, uh, which indicates this is an extended and then the actual uh, another label following it. So this is the extended special purpose label. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, I need to read and I will be back. But, but I have one other uh, you and that is that when you get close to um, work group last call in the spring work group i would like you to at least uh, one to two before that request a early allocation of the special purpose tables from the mpls work group because the mpls work group will do the allocation at least yes. be involved in uh, the allocation. So do an early allocation when you get them ready to go to work in the task force to resolve that issue before. Yeah, yeah, we, we can definitely do that. Uh, thanks for that. Good. Uh, the, the question I have is this is a spring document that has uh, pretty much all the MPLS technology uh, in the graph, do you see anything? That okay, uh, let's go back to the queue now and. No, no, okay. I'm not. not that. Uh, so what? What I want to say is that uh, are there anything that we need to do between the spring work group and the MPLS work group uh, before you go to work group adoption? Yeah, so there is uh, MPLS uh, data plane, uh, SR MPLS data plane, as well as SRV6 data plane um, uh, support in this draft. Um, so uh, I'm not sure. Um, I look forward to feedbacks from the chairs of Spring and MPLS, or may even be six men, I'm not sure, uh, to uh, see where this draft should be hosted. Uh, I don't have any preference, but um, good to have a draft that covers this uh, this uh, solution. Well, I think uh, we talked about this draft with the uh, uh, well, that before we had two new shares. Oh, yeah, we might need to talk about it again. But uh, this draft that was the spring, it only means that when you do it to work group adoption, you may need to push on the spring chairs to actually uh, uh, post this work group adoption in the MP network group also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll keep that in mind and um, uh, we'll let uh, spring chairs know. Okay. Um, going back to the queue and, um, you know, I'm trying to manage the time, you keep track of the time. Um, I was in the queue next. I'll ask uh, my question very quick. Uh, uh, there is in the liveless detection. This is Tarek from Juniper. So um, I'm on slide six, I think. Uh, why there, we have something called SBFD that does live liveness detection, a seamless BFD. Uh, uh, how the, did you consider this to solve the problem of liveness detection? Uh, so uh, there is increased uh, push for uh, simplification. SR brings a lot of sim simplification in the network. Uh, 
and uh, having multiple protocols, um, uh, the development cost uh, as well as deployment, operational cost in networks, uh, they are quite heavy with multiple, um, you know, monitoring protocols. Uh, okay. TWAMP is uh, is um, heavily uh, implemented. Uh, hardware, a lot of uh, vendors, um, actually most vendors support them and it's deployed and tooling and operational is well understood. Um, and there is increased uh, push for uh, latency based, um, you know, monitoring uh, in 5G networks. So uh, uh, with the, you know, innovation and the push uh, of um, new requirements, especially coming from 5G, um, using it's using T1 message formats. Uh, I would say that it can use different message formats too, but the, the solution allows to do uh, enhance, uh, it's a leap, uh, forward uh, leapfrog for the um, monitoring protocol for that does multiple things in one shot. Okay, uh, um, I'm, I don't expect you to answer, but I'm, I'm just going to share and build up on Greg's uh, questions. There was uh, a concern in the, uh, you know, in reporting back uh, and on the reverse path, any problem on the reverse path, uh, reporting back the liveness detection uh, there was a concern uh, posed on a on a on a, on a different draft, um, I, which I think uh, uh, somehow applies here. I'll share with you that concern, and maybe you can uh, clarify how you solved it on your side. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Satan. I'll go back to the queue to see if uh, uh, we have uh, we have Adrian. Adrian, I think Adrian is there. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Rakesh, for this. I, I'm not sure whether your slides have got ahead of your uh, draft or, or something. Um, but anyway, if in your draft you were able to fix figure six, um, I think there might be two fixes um, here. The first is to show that this is an extended uh, special purpose label. Um, in other words, you need two label stack entries for it. Uh, and the second is, is some confusion. Um, you've just been talking about the network programming uh, label. Uh, and um, the draft is referring to a timestamp label. I think it might be helpful to add some clarity about that. Uh, yes, so yeah, it is uh, generically network programming uh, function and uh, in case of MPLS is network programming uh, label uh, that does the time stamping uh, in this use case and for SRV6 is network function, network programming and function. Um, so we can clarify in the draft and uh, you are right that uh, the extension label um, just put it just before posting the slide, we added it in the slides, but uh, draft uh, needs to update. Sure, sure, these things happen. Uh, so to be clear then, this this label, do you, do you envisage that it would have more use cases than just the timestamp? So uh, if there are different use cases, then we either we have a different label or um, we change the network function for it. Uh, at this point, uh, we are not aware of it, but working with the working group and um, if there is an innovation uh, we can do to solve an, um, you know, a bigger problem or bigger um, um, you know, use case, uh, we can definitely work together and um, uh, develop the solution. Right, and, and that's fine. I just wanted to be clear that if you call this, if you go ahead calling this a timestamp label and that gets into the registry, then that's what it is and you can't use it for other things. If you call it a network programming label, that's fine and the, and the timestamp is one use and you need then to have some text that describes how people might add other uses in the future. Yes, yeah, that's an excellent uh, feedback, uh, Adrian. Um... We'll we'll think more about this and um, and come back with uh, our um, thoughts on this. Okay, lovely, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, I see Greg is back in the queue. Uh, we have Rakesh is up next uh, for another presentation. Um, 
I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, um, consider Greg to ask the question maybe after Rakesh finishes his next presentation, just to uh, uh, make sure that we have enough time. Probably we're running out of time. So Rakesh, I'll flip to the next uh, set of slides and, uh, and, uh, and sorry if I cut off anyone in the queue. So go ahead. Thanks, Tariq. Um, so uh, again, I'm Rakesh Gandhi from Cisco presenting the draft on PM using RFC 6374 uh, for SR MPLS networks uh, on behalf of the authors uh, listed on this slide. And next slide, please. So the agenda uh, requirement and scope of this draft, uh, the history of the draft, um, it's been around for some time. Um, the updates that we made since we presented a couple of uh, ITFs ago uh, and uh, the summary and next steps. Next slide, please. Uh, so this draft uh, uh, addresses uh, the PM uh, delay and loss uh, measurement requirement for SRMPLS uh, links as well as end-to-end uh, -end, uh, paths uh, for um, uh, as well as advertising the metrics in the network. Um, various modes are defined in RFC 6374. Um, and the, as we know, the SRMPLS, the, it's a stateless on uh, responder node. So there is uh, the spirit is to have state in the probe messages. Uh, the scope is RFC 6374 as well as RFC 7876 for the UDP return path. Next slide, please. So draft has been around for uh, over two years now, and uh, it was um, it was in spring, and uh, we presented in MPLS working group, and uh, now it has been uh, uh, adopted by the MPLS working group uh, as a working group document. Next slide, please. So uh, uh, before adoption, uh, MPLS RT expert review uh, was done, and uh, we have updated draft to uh, address the comments. Uh, and the comments were to combine, uh, support the combined DM plus LM message format. Um, there were some questions about P2MP, uh, so we have added uh, details for P2MP uh, SRMPLS paths. Uh, added a section on backwards compatibility. Uh, IANA was missing a registry for the return uh, sub TLV. Uh, return path sub TLV. So this was added in the draft and various editorial changes uh, suggested by the uh, experts. Uh, so draft has been updated and uh, posted. Uh, there are no open items at this time. And uh, next slide, please. And next slide, Tarek. Hello, I am, Next I'm at the end. Uh, okay, it's not refreshing for me, but um, okay. Yeah, so at this point, uh, we are looking for um, uh, feedbacks and um, uh, suggestions uh, from the working group. It is a working group document and um, welcome your comments. Thanks. Okay, uh, are you uh, asking for uh, you're asking for feedback from the group. Uh, is this in a good shape to progress uh, to working group last call? You think? Um, yeah, it's it's in very good shape to progress as working group last call. Uh, definitely, um, we haven't formally asked for it, um, but okay. uh, yeah, it's 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 quite ready. It's been around for two and a half years, and uh, I would think so. All right, I just wanted to get a sense from you. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, um, uh, I, I did uh, promise Greg for another question. So if it is one question, please go ahead, Greg. Uh, no, actually, I already uh, put my, thank you. Uh, I already put my comment. It was in regard to um, SBFD in, in case of point to multipoint. Uh, to the best of my understanding, SBFD is not applicable to uh, point to multipoint. Okay. All right. I'll switch to the next uh, 
presentation. We have uh, Fan, uh, and the floor is yours. Fan, are you present? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, can you hear me, Simon? Yes. Yes, Simon. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, actually, as one of the one of the author of this draft, I uh, I need to do the presentation uh, instead of Liu Yin because he, she's joining another ITUT meeting right now. So um, this is a this is a new draft, uh, the zero zero uh, version draft of, about the uh, signal degrade degrade date indication used in the MPRS network. Uh, actually, not last time, uh, last ITF meeting, we present another uh, problem statement about this same topic. And, and we, I know that we uh, state that it is um, uh, more special for the SR or SRO MPLS network. Um, but here, maybe we, we can have some discussion about the scope um, because um, maybe we can, maybe in this draft that we propose uh, a general uh, proposal for a general solution for the MPLS network. But we can discuss it later. <laughs> next, next slide, please. please. And in this draft that we solved some problem uh, from the last uh, last uh, draft that we think that there is some uh, basic understandings uh, because uh, and the this signal uh, the grade um, is uh, is um, brings a significant uh, impact to the networks and especially to the services and it should be noticed and detected and maybe uh, reported to 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 the controller or to the other um uh, protocols to to trigger the other protocols and um, yes and in this new draft that uh, we propose two protocol extensions uh, one is for the networks using the bfd or sbfd another is the networks using the mprs tpom um, or the MPRS TP uh, BFD. Uh, next, please. Yeah, in in this page that we uh, I listed the um, the encapsulation of the BFD uh, protocol that uh, we would like to use one of the reserved. Uh, we would like to use the reserved bit for the uh, of the BFD uh, diagnostic um, um, in in the BFD's uh, encapsulation to indicate that there uh, there is a signal degrade. Um, yeah, that uh, I think that would be the uh, that would be a, a very general. Um, uh, general modification for the for the BFD or SBFD uh, protocols. And next, please. Uh, yeah, in this page, actually, I, I I made some modification about the encapsulation here. Uh, on uh, not not this one. <laughs> yeah, I think the last one. Uh, I, I think the the. The, the encapsulation of the BFD is, is a little bit uh, different from the draft from the the one in in my draft, um, but th that may be a a, a a different way. But it doesn't matter. Uh, and for this M, uh, for this for the for the networks using the MPRS TP uh, OAM or the MPRS TP BFD uh, protocols that we would like to have the different uh, modification or different extension here that for the MPS TP OAM that uh, we we would like to use the um, the PDU the PDU uh, definitions uh, inside of the MPS label and the gal label um, to use one of the reserved bit in the in the flag that in the flag place in the flag and that the, the yellow part is the is the extension and uh, for the networks using the MPS TP BFD, that some extension could be done based uh, based on the RFC uh, 6428. Um, but I didn't uh, list the extension extension way uh, in my draft because I I was thinking that if there is any uh, interest in in the extension of this uh, based on this new RFC. And next, please. Uh, 
and I have some uh, actually I have some questions here uh, that I I know that there, there are um, two different ways or two different proposals in my uh, draft and I I I need to uh, and figure out that for the BFD extension that uh, should be uh, should this work be uh, done in the MPS working group or the BFD working group? Uh, should I uh, split the 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 split to different part to two parts of this uh, draft? And that is one question. Another is uh, to I would like to collect the interest, uh, especially from the operators uh, and the the vendors and the equipment vendors, uh, if they if they are interested in the signal degrade degrade uh, indication the internet works because I, I I feel that during the offline discussion I feel there uh, there are uh, different operators that uh, do need this uh, signal degrade indication that in the MPLs or in the layer 3 uh, network in the in the net uh, in the layer 3 protocols and there are also some minor issues maybe related to the signal degrade um, but uh, they are they they come out from the uh, uh, the other people the others uh, of the dis uh, of the offline discussion that like for example how to measure this um, signal degrade um, and should be there any new parameters uh, be defined here because I see there is maybe a related uh, topic uh, in another draft. Uh, I haven't talked to the authors there, but um, maybe that could be a, a, a new um, uh, some some discussion here, and um, and also this other uh, thoughts about the the indication to to the indication of the signal degree to in, uh, to uh, used in the performance measurement. Yeah, but there are there are minor discussions that uh, besides the uh, the proposals in the draft. Okay, next, please. Uh, yes, uh, I actually we we we, obs uh, we, op we have already observed some uh, suggestions from the other uh, from the other offline discussions or from the previous meetings, and we would like to to have more discussion and to collaborate with uh, other with the the authors from other uh, related topic. Uh, related topics drafts, and we also want to hear more uh, comments about this new draft. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, Loa or Nick, uh, do you want to take the question uh, uh, on the BFD versus MPLS? Or let uh, me know. I, I, can, I can say something at least. Uh, I don't see this as more complicated, uh, more complicated cooperation with another work group than on the uh, previous two drafts. So I think uh, it's good if we can keep the document as one single document, and we need to involve the BFT work group uh, on another. We need to discuss with them and decide how. Okay. okay. Uh, Thank you. And I'm, I'm very interested to, if you get any feedback on the uh, next bullet, uh, collect the interest, because if you get, I think you should document it one way or another, maybe only a mail to the mailing list, but uh, at least make the work group aware of what you have. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I would like to, to do that, yes. Okay, great. Um, I'll uh, move on to the next okay. presenter then. I don't know if you have it, Greg. Thank you. Sorry? Repeat that again, please. Uh, I thought uh, Greg was in the queue. Oh, no, uh, I, I probably. I, you can confirm. I took a quick look. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see he added himself uh, yeah, now. <laughs> okay, Greg, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I can switch back to the previous presentation. 
Yeah. Um, actually, um, the question is probably, I hope that's simple. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, you're proposing to allocate a, a bit, so change the size of the diac field. Uh, can you share why it's not a value, why you need a bit position, why you need a flag? Um, you mean but besides <clears throat> uh, besides the the proposal of the BFD uh, modification, uh, why I need to uh, to propose another uh, another uh, modification based on the the gal label? Uh, not not the, yeah, uh, not the gal label. So uh, if I understand correctly, um, you are proposing to change the size of the diac field. Yes. Yes. So why it cannot be uh, one of the values? Because there are plenty of uh, values available. Uh, yeah, I, I, actually, I didn't want to change the. Yeah, I just want to um, apply for a new code for the BFD uh, diagnost, uh, diagnostic uh -huh. field. Uh, yeah. OK, OK, just the value, not the bit field. OK, thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. Okay, yeah, great. the bit field is actually for the other uh, uh, proposal. Yes. Okay. okay. Anyone else in the queue? Uh, in the okay. We don't have anyone else. Um, okay. I'll, Sounds like not thank much you. interested here. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Fan. Thank uh, you. Next, we have Yao or Greg. I think Yao was the presenter. Hey, yay. Uh, I'm online. Yeah, we can hear you, Yao. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Yao Liu from ZTE. My presentation today is about the verification, verification method between the control plane and the data plane state for MPLs based service function path. Um, next slide, please. MPLs can be used to realize service function path. So far, there are two methods. One is based on SR service programming, where each service function is related with an MPS label. Another is defined in IFC 8595. An MPS label stack is used to carry the logical presentation of NSH. The basic unit of the label stack comprises two labels. One provides a context within the SFC scope, and the other carries the label to show which service function is to be enacted. And in MPLS, the LSV pin is used to verify the data plan against the control plan. And this draft proposes extensions of LSV pin to show uh, to allow verification of the cor correlation between the control or management plan and the data plan state in MPS based SFC. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, uh, first, uh, for the MPS on SH, we define the new fact, TLV, uh, fact sub TLV. Unlike standard MPS forwarding, which is based on a single label, in IFC 8595, packet forwarding is based on the basic unit of MPS label for SFC. So the new FAC sub TLV can be used to carry the corresponding FAC of the basic unit. And uh, uh, the RD and SF type fields are defined in the BGP control plane draft for NSH while the MPS based on SH is also included. And a node that receives an LSV pin with a new fact sub TLV will check if it is its RD and whether it advertised that service function type. Next slide, please. And uh, we also define an SFC validation TLV in this draft. If an MPS echo request or fly contains this TLV, it is an SFC validation message. This TLV contains sub-TLVs only in reply messages. 
Uh, two sub-tier Vs are defined separately for SR service programming and MPL is based on SH. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, this sub-tier V is defined for SR service programming. Uh, it includes uh, the SFF label and it represents a seed of the service function for order. And the SF label represents the service set of the service functions, uh, service function or SR proxy. And the SF type indicates a type of service function such as DPI, firewall. And the SR proxy type is defined in SR service programming and indicates a type of SR proxy if it exists. And next slide, please. <clears throat> And uh, uh, this sub tier V is defined for SR service programming. Uh, the SFC uh, uh, forwarding type indicates the forwarding type of the basic unit, uh, uh, which in could be label swapping or label stacking, as defined in RFC 8595. And the meaning of the SFC context label and the SF label. And depends on the SFC forwarding type, also defining RFC uh, 8595. And next slide, please. And, and generally, uh, the packet processing functions support, supported by service functions are limited. Service functions may, uh, such as firewall, may not support MPLS or M protocols like LSVP. So service function forwarders are responsible for MPLS echo request processing. And, uh, and a service function forwarder sends an SFC echo request to its control plane when the receiver is a terminal SFF for an SFP or the MPLS TTL expires. In IFC 595, it says, if an service function forwarder decrement, decrements the TTL to zero, it must not send the packet and must discard the packet. To trace SFC, it should be changed to allow it should be changed to allow pointing the packet to the control plane under certain control. And upon receiving the SFC validation request, an in SR service programming, an SSF passes through the label step until the next label is not a local service set to get all the service functions attached to the SFF and in MPLs based on SH. And service function forwarder checks the MPLs label stack to get all the locally attached basic units for SFC. And then the service function forwarder sends back a reply message, including SFF and SF information recorded in SFC info sub tier V as we defined before as we defined in this document. And after all service function forwarders on the service function pass send back MPR's echo reply, the sender collects information about all the transverse SFFs and SFs on the random service pass. Next slide, please. And so uh, this is a summary. And this draft proposes extensions to MPLS LSPP mechanics, including a new FAC sub TLV for MPLS based on SH, a new SFC validation TLV, including uh, sub TLVs for uh, SR service programming and MPLS based on SH. And there's also an update uh, of RSC of RFC 8595. <clears throat> Next slide, please. And, and we uh, request feedbacks and comments. And uh, we would like to ask chairs for some advice about uh, which working group is an appropriate place to work on the draft since there are some overlap and peers or spring. And thanks. Thank you. Uh, so, 
Uh, currently, uh, uh, I think we'll uh, track the spring working group. Uh, have you presented this work in spring as well? Uh, uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, yeah, my feedback on this is, is it has an MPLS aspect and you are presenting it in the MPLS. Uh, we are interested in, uh, in keeping, uh, you know, uh, updating and in, in getting this uh, work done here, but, but this, uh, given that you are also uh, allocating uh, uh, specific uh, uh, service function SIDs or um, uh, that's my understanding. Is uh, uh, Spring Working Group might be interested in this work as well? Uh, okay. Uh, and we can continue we're... for now to to keep it in MPLS. Uh, this is my say, and the other uh, working group chairs can comment. Um, and uh, you, uh, we advise that to keep the Spring Working Group um, uh, in the loop for now. Uh, Loa, Nick, uh, feel free to comment as well. And I have uh, one comment. Uh, we are still a little bit uh, worried about uh, the thing, and we want to keep control of the little thing. So, since we are making new TLVs, and I think you are allocating them for uh, TLV number one. That's correct. Uh, sorry, my network condition maybe uh, well, not so well. So, so, but you are, you, you are uh, allocating in sub TLVs, and I say this is probably for TLV, not TLV number one. Is that correct? If you look at LS thing. Uh, it looks to me that the uh, top here is defined here uh, to the to the effect, so it should be TLV number one. Can you verify that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought we lost you. Go ahead. I I just hear hear the the part, but I can't uh, hear it clearly. Uh, and could you send the question to the mailing list? I think uh, uh, what what you're trying to, is it uh, you're asking that the so, with the extension of the uh, fact sub TLV here. So the fact, yeah, but. And when you send a, a reply and you want to send a, a sub TLV, you need a TLV to stick it into. Which TLV? TLV don't go on their own into uh, the. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, we, we define. Uh, we define the fax sub TLV uh, not for collecting the uh, SFP message. And this fax sub TLV is uh, used as uh, other sub TLVs in uh, kind of the same way. It, 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 it carries the information uh, uh, gets from the control uh, protocols such as BGP. So uh, the sender may be know the that he get get from BGP the RD and the SF type it is advertised uh, through BGP. So he uh, it can use the uh, fax up TLV to check if the data plan, uh, if the, the 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 data get from the control plan is uh, okay. is the same from the control plan, and uh, for that, that, that part is understood. I think. Uh, but what I'm saying is, if you have a sub TLV, you can't stick the sub TLV on its own into a, for example, an echo reply. Uh, you need to. Oh, yeah, have, yeah. So, which uh, TLV does it, does it get, will carry this sub TLV? Yes. The, uh, 
so it, on, on the one hand, we define a new fax sub PLV. It is not for uh, carried in the echo reply. Uh, we we define the uh, we define the as uh, access data TLV. It's a new TLV, and it is used to collect the information through the MPLS echo reply, and not the fax TLV. Uh, um, I'm not entirely sure what you're saying. Um, I tried to write the question, write up the question and send it to the, to the mailing list. Okay, uh, I'll, cl I'll clarify it in the mailing list. Mm, maybe okay. the, the, the slides didn't write it very clear. Okay. Anything Thank else? You. Uh, let me check if there was other other questions. Pending, uh, no, that was lower. Okay, Loa, you're okay from your side. Uh, can I proceed to the next? Uh... You can proceed. All right. Okay, thank you. And uh, next we have uh, uh, Regis uh, or Thomas. Uh, he's presenting on LARP, labeled ARP. Yeah. Hi, Tarek. Uh, Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Reggie Thomas from Juniper Networks. Uh, I'll be on a lot from the last working group meeting. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, so from the last working group, there has been uh, significant progress on the implementation front. Uh, we have a working LR prototype on tungsten fabric for an SDN solution where we use the actually extend the MPLS fabric all the way to MPLS over MPLS fabric in the data center. Uh, we also have a uh, working prototype of LR client as well as a basic server on uh, Linux. And in this case, uh, the LR trigger is actually from the packet path um, in contrast to like, the earlier case where the trigger is actually on the control plane via route download. So. Uh, regarding some of the work in progress, we have the LAP server work, which is actually in progress uh, with respect to the Juniper routing stack. And we also have the work which is uh, currently in progress on FRR. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, so there are uh, some of the to-do items uh, we need to actually update on the draft. So uh, one of the... Uh, assumptions which we had was uh, on the LR replay today we only send an LR and uh, the, there's an implicit assumption that uh, on the specific interface we have a single LR server or a gateway and so this LR label which is returned by the LR server is bound to that specific uh, the IP address of that uh, gateway. So uh, this would be a problem if we have multiple LR servers uh, on the same LAN, and so for that, like we need to revisit that, and uh, if possible, if it makes sense to actually add the IP address uh, also in the LR replay. So uh, again, we need to update a draft on the label refresh part from the client side, uh, as well as uh, the label withdrawal uh, from the server, and uh, finally. Uh, um, uh, we also need a consensus on the uh, approach of using LR for IPv6 addresses. We are using the LR for both V4 and V6 address. We believe that is um, clear and uh, it's the right thing to do, but we need a consensus on the approach from the working group also. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, uh, we do have some of these uh, things to iron out, but we believe that the overall approach is uh, uh, solid considering we have like a working prototypes and there has been uh, interest from service providers uh, on this. And based on that, we believe the document is uh, ready for an uh, working group adoption call. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Let me see if uh, there are questions. In there are no questions in the queue. Um, thank you, uh, Regis. Uh, and uh, 
Uh, I think uh, this was presented multiple times now uh, to the working group. Uh, and um, yeah, we can progress it uh, to the, uh, the process of getting it adopted. Uh, you know, a, a review from the uh, MPLS review team, and then um, yeah, uh, we we can uh, progress the document. Uh, if there, we we encourage the working group to give feedback uh, if there is uh, um, more interest in in the in the work, or if there is any technical. Uh, issues that uh, they want to raise. Thank you. So, so Tarek, yeah. uh, one question that actually struck me now, and I haven't thought about it really, so it might be stupid, but, but are there uh, um, scaling issues? Uh, uh, especially with our, with our, uh, how the network can you support? Um, so, uh, if you're talking with respect to the LR, right, this is sort of like on demand. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, say, like, say, you leave if where, where we need to communicate, right? Like, uh, that's the time which we, where we do the LR and would learn the label. So, uh, at least, like, a, uh, we don't really see a scaling issue over there. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, uh, Riti, go ahead. Yeah, no, what what, I, what uh, Reggie said is the right thing. Um, typically, um, in the data center, a compute server is connected via an L2 connection, but only to the nearest tower, and after that, it's all L3. So the number of uh, ARP requests that, uh, that it would send would be exactly for the servers, the other compute servers it needs to connect to. So as he said, it's on demand. So the example that he gave of um, the LR uh, implementation uh, on tungsten fabric, when you get a route with a BGP next hop that is of interest to you uh, as defined by the route target, it's a VPN that you have a VM that's a part of, and there are these other computes which are the BGP next hops. Those are the only uh, things that you're going to allow for. So, I mean, there is, of course, always a problem with uh, ARP in general in terms of who do you connect to. But if this server needs to connect to 100 other servers, uh, it should be sized for that. If it needs to connect to 1,000 other servers, the ARP entry, I don't think, is a big problem. It's the whole bunch of other uh, issues that uh, there would be in terms of scaling. But it is uh, a very much um, constrained thing. So you're not doing a general ARP request for uh, everything that's in the data center. You're only doing an ARP request for uh, compute servers that um, are in your uh, table of interest to you. Does that answer your question, Lua? Uh, yes. I, I was actually more worried about R than LAR. I say LAR work, but I ARP in the background, or ARP as architecture could actually have limits. It's not uh, that obvious. True. You're talking about hundred as well. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Um, uh, I mean, you have both uh, running, and you know, uh, regular ARP will always be there. But as I said, since the Tor is typically connected, uh, you know, point to point with the, uh, sorry, the computer is connected point to point with the Tor. Uh, they could be a LAN, but it's uh, unusual. Um, but it's limited, the ARP, regular ARP will be limited to whatever is on that LAN. The LARP goes beyond because uh, the Tor is acting as a proxy server for all the remote uh, computes that this, uh, this particular server needs to talk to. So, in fact, uh, the LARP table will probably be, be bigger than the regular ARP table, uh, especially if you have compute connected uh, point to point with the Tor. Uh, you just have a handful of entries for regular ARP. Okay, that's fine. Okay, any other questions? In the... I don't see uh, in, any further questions. Um, Kiriti, I have, uh, uh, since you're on, uh, you have the mic now and you're asking 
question. I have uh, another request uh, for a presentation on the agenda for no further pass trade out. Yes, um, there's no presentation as such. I basically want to ask two questions. One is, can we, what does it take to begin the, the early allocation request um, for a special purpose label? Uh, we had a discussion slightly earlier about you know, doing such a request. Uh, in this case, we, we would really like an, uh, a special purpose label, not an extended special purpose label. So what, you know, what should we do to get that going? And the second thing is, uh, in this draft also, I think it's, uh, I mean, it has not been a whole lot of discussion, but it is reasonably stable. Um, and I think we have put in the in the document several use cases for the no further pass read out uh, label. So we would like to consider progressing it to a working group document. But I think more more uh, interesting would be um, what what do we need to do to make that a uh, that special label uh, early request. Okay. Uh um i can uh, do, do you want to take that lower or uh, uh well no not really because i'm not <laughs> sure uh, we, i think uh, i need a couple of days to think about it we are getting very low on uh, on labels so I think we need to start looking at um, what we require, uh, what, what type of uh, argumentation and documentation before we actually assign a new uh, base uh, special purpose labels. Uh, but I'm not ready to respond just now. No, no. So I, I guess the question I had was, um, I mean, I do want that label. But the question I had is, how do I proceed? What is the process for getting an extended special purpose label? Um, do I make a request to the MPLS uh, list? Do I do it um, via, uh, you know, uh, an update to the draft? The draft already asked for one. Uh, do I, I don't know what the process is. Okay. Well, for assigning any cohort, you put it in the AIFS section on, on the uh, on the document uh, that you are progressing. Yeah, I believe it's there. You, uh, of course, it's an individual contribution right now, so yeah, uh, there is that. But but it's in the IANA section. Uh, to your other point about, you know, we're getting low on these labels. I don't believe there's been a, special, a base special purpose label request in the last several years. So, in fact, since the draft was written, uh, since the RFC was written, so I'm not sure what's different today from, I mean, if in the last three years uh, or four years, we've had like two or three such requests, that would be uh, a quarter of the space that's left. But right now we actually haven't seen any new requests. I am not tracking it really closely, but uh, at least if I go to IANA, I don't see anything there. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm not asking for an answer right now. I'm asking what is the procedure so that we can get this going. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, from my side, I think that we should, uh, you know, progress the document to get adopted. Uh, and uh, since you're uh, highlighting implementations, existing implementations uh Kiriti, right this is yeah, why you want so to we do it. have a prototype for this i'm not sure what, what the status of uh for the no for, no for the past three out uh i i will report on the status of that um uh you know at the next uh ietf or interim meeting for mpls uh but so so um or i can do it on on the email list uh, and based on that, we can decide to progress this to working group uh, document. Does that make so, sense? Uh, if we, we answer to the process, one, we put it in the IANA section as how the individual documents. We discuss 
when we do a work group adoption and uh, we'll give you a direction on what type of label you can get. Uh, then, uh, we take it to work group last call and public feature request uh, and uh, whatever in the IANA section will actually get executed by IANA. Okay, um, hopefully we can get uh, uh, an answer to that and the uh, early request earlier than uh, last call because we want to implement it and see, you know, actually use that and see how that does. But I mean, that, that's the point of an early request. But, but if, certainly, if you um, I, will, uh, I will send a mail to the list about the status of implementation. And then based on that, you guys can decide um, how to move that forward to a working group document. At which point, we'll come back and um, re revisit the question of early allocation. The, so if you want to have an early allocation, you need a working group document. And yes, that yeah. initiative needs to come from the author. Yes, so that's what I just said. We will um, give you the information on implementation so that uh, you can use that with the working group uh, adoption, and, the, and then we'll revisit the early allocation. That, that's fair enough. I uh, got disconnected and came back now. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, so, so I, I think it's a fair um, point that if you think the document is in, in a good condition to be uh, undergone the group adoption, uh, we can progress with that uh, and uh, take it from there as Loa was saying. So, okay, so, so we'll start with that and then we'll come back to the early allocation. Sounds good. I, I see that, uh, I think AC is trying to ask a question. There is, he is in the queue, or at least the LSR working group is in the queue. The whole LSR, no, I think it's AC. Yeah. I'm, speaking, I'm, speaking, I'm, speaking for, I'm speaking for AC and not the yeah, entire LSR, LSR, LSR working group. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one, thing, one, one, thing, one thought I had, you know, for the, assuming, assuming we allocate this best first label, do you think this label should be uh, a, a label it used for Form of MPLS looping where the use case has to be described, and this is the first use case. I'll put this comment out when Karidi asks for uh, allocation as well. In, because depending on the use case, I don't know. So it's not so much looping, but it's that um, if you've done a fast reroute and you do another fast reroute, um, then you could get yourself in trouble because you might. Yes. Uh, cause a loop, you might cause other things. So it's not you're trying to prevent looping per se, you're trying to prevent a second fast reader which could have a bad result. Um, and and the, the thing is it could arise and the, the doc document says multiple uh, ways that it could arise. Uh, and it can arise also in the, in the context of uh, a label stack with uh, adjacency SIDS. So um, having this to be a special purpose label uh, would be much more efficient than having needing two labels for each thing. But to your question, no, I, no, I'm, yeah. not, I'm, I, I, no I'm not debating that. I'm just saying in yeah. the terminology when we allocate this label, could it be could it be used for detecting this uh, type of loop condition? It seems to me when I maybe 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 it maybe it couldn't, but. Uh, and this would be the first use case of using this label for detecting looping. So, like I said, it's not generically detecting looping. It's to say yeah. you've done a fast reroute. If you do another fast reroute, you may cause a loop. Right. I mean, right. we have a TTL that will fix the loop, hopefully. You know, but but we don't want to get there because the whole point of the fast reroute is to reduce the packets lost, and then if you cause you know a loop. Or, or some other uh, adverse condition, then you're okay. actually defeating the purpose of that uh, fast reroute. So yeah, I, I, understand, I, I know. I understand. I understand the use case. I'm just yeah. trying to see. I'm just trying to see if we could get more mileage out of these limited uh, 
limited special purpose labels, not the extended ones. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I mean, if you if you have an example, I think it's worth thinking about. But the thing okay. is, the semantics is you've done. I mean, this thing already has done a fast way out. If you were planning to do a fast way out, don't. And and so if you add to that semantics, um, then you can use the label for multiple things. That's great. But I I think then you might actually start yeah, achieve the first case. I'll think about the terminology. I'll think about the terminology. No, I under, I understand I understand this use case. I've seen it presented at at least two times, maybe more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Casey. Thanks. Okay, uh, thank you, Kiriti, and uh, yeah, we expect uh, you know an update on the mailing list uh, with uh, with what you promised, and we will take uh, the adoption further. Perfect. Uh, and uh, with this, this was the last uh, presentation on our agenda today. Um, and we thank you for attending uh, the session, and uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next IETF meeting. Um, be, before we adjourn, uh, if uh, Nick or Loa want to say anything, uh, um, feel free right now. Nothing from my side. <clears throat> All right, I don't see anything or hear anything from Loa. So uh, thank you so much again, and uh, looking forward to see, see meeting yep. with you Great. again. Bye. Bye. See you. Recording.